Okay, hi everybody. It's really great to be delivering this webinar today to colleagues at Working Links. I uh, hope you're all well and I'm sure you're all looking forward to the weekend. Um, Working Links and IEP have worked together for such a long time now since the IEP was established. And uh, I have the utmost respect for many colleagues um, in Working Links, including uh, Brian and Claire, and and more recently uh, Zoe Bradwick, who sits on our IEP board, which is is wonderful. Um, I'm the executive chairman of the Institute of Employability Professionals, and it's my job today to try my best um, to help you navigate the IEP website and the services and support that's available there for you. I do find that uh, once you access it for the first time, you will then use it quite a lot. Sometimes it's just that first step that seems a little bit strange. And hopefully after today, uh, you will be able to uh, get access um, um, and work through that. And if you don't have access, you can request your password to be um, reset and you can get the credentials you need to, to log in. Okay. So, I'm um, going to take this in three stages today. Um, stage one is I'm going to talk to you about um, what the IEP thinks and has thought for the last two years um, the future advisor looks like. A number of you will be operating uh, around those kind of dynamics already. Uh, remembering this, this research, this opinion uh, was formed two years ago. Um, then I'm going to talk you through a number of the practical things that you can gain as an IEP member, uh, whether that's as an IEP corporate affiliate member through Working Links or whether that's as an individual member, um, you doing that off your own back, as it were. And then finally, I'm going to talk about what I think the future is going to look like with regards to uh, training and development of uh, what we are now calling employability practitioners. Um, so I hope that it's uh, it's interesting for you today. I hope you can keep with me. And um, for any other colleagues that weren't able to join the call, uh, we will make sure that we repeat this webinar again and make it available to those individuals that weren't able to be here today. So we're going to switch between a few things. So be bear, bear with me, please. Um, but this is really important and then I can show you a presentation and then a, a, a live demonstration. And, and they always say you should never work with children and animals, but I've, I've also put IT um, systems in there uh, because sometimes things don't work quite as well as they should do. But you won't find any problem with it um, as you use it after the webinar, but sometimes it, it falls down as I'm, as I'm delivering the presentation. So I'm hoping now that I can share my presentation screen. Now that's not there yet, so just bear with me a second. I won't keep you a moment. Ah, here we go. So uh, you will now see a presentation come up, which is what I want to deliver to you today. Thank you. So what I said was that we are the Institute of Employability Professionals, or IEP for short. We are responsible um, for, and our purpose, is to support the development of everybody and anyone that is working within an employability profession. And over the last year or two, that has in, included housing people, that's included careers advisors, people working on citizenship contracts, people working across a myriad of different areas. And we're really excited about what that provides for the opportunity um, that um, people deliver to, to customers every single day. We're also there to prove to public and government that what you do every single day is worthwhile. Now we know it is, um, but very little has been done, um, certainly up to five years ago, regarding this as a profession hosted and staffed by professionals. The social and economic impact that you guys have every single day is amazing. It's equal to what people would consider, and, and if not more so, people would consider to be professional occupations. Um, social work, teaching, um, I don't know, even as far as physiotherapy, occupational therapy, things like that. We're working across a very dynamic space these days. So within healthcare, social care, housing, um, employment support, and, and learning and development. And so in essence, 
employability is overarching within those uh, those elements, but it's also incredibly important that we continue to um, enable people to see how much of an impact um, the sector and those working within it have on people's lives day in, day out. Now, I've been working in the sector for about 25 years, and when I started, there were a, a large number of uh, what I can only describe as, and I apologize for this, generically unemployed people, people who needed uh, motivation and confidence building, but invariably had the skills or had the, um, the skill-based ability to retrain, to do what within reason they wanted to do. Now, we all know that the market has changed. Uh, we are dealing with significantly less people every year, but we're also dealing with people with significantly more challenges. Now, for one, I think that's brilliant because that supports our um, argument around specialisms and professional um, entities and professional people working within the sector. But clearly that's, that's a challenge for um, individuals to, to keep pace and to keep supporting those individuals, uh, those customers um, in that vein. So that's why the IEP is here. And that's our vision. And, you know, it does what it says on the tin. Our route to gaining access and to providing excellent services for those people who need it most is through employment advisors, employment coaches, employment consultants, employability officers, careers advisors, whatever that frontline individual who's doing that specialist job is called within an organization, that's our route through. So we do have a fundamental impact on the level and um, and positivity of the services that are provided, but it is through through a third party, as it were, through through the people that I'm speaking to today. And these are the kinds of organisations that we deal with. And nothing there will surprise you, although we are doing a lot more work these days with local authorities and housing associations. And we're also working with think tanks and other kind of research bodies. But that's not as a lobbying organisation. That's not what we do. And the IEP constantly proves the positivity in terms of what our people are doing every single day. So if we are talking to government or we're talking to a third party about policy and what strategy should be adopted, that is fundamentally through practice of frontline practitioners. If you remember the green paper on um, disability employment and um, colleagues from working links influenced and supported and provided the, the mainstay of our um, return to um, the, the department, uh, to, to the um, select committee um, around that, um, that, uh, that green paper. So in essence, um, your voice is helped and supported through, through our um, professional membership body. Okay, number of organizations there you can see. Uh, a number of organizations we work with every year, and there are many, many more. I can't fit any more on this. And you'll be happy to see, you can see her organization there. Uh, and I do like the new branding, by the way. I know, I know it's not new, new now, but I, I do like it. Okay, so how do we go about our work as an institute? Well, we want everybody that is connected with us as an individual to be empowered. We want you to believe and genuinely understand what you're doing has real social purpose. And, we, and, and I don't want anyone to teach, uh, teach anyone suck eggs on this presentation today, but this is really important. Um, as I say, I've worked in the sector for such a long time, and it just becomes almost the natural norm that what we do is what we do. But particularly people working with customers every single day, which I, I don't anymore, um, what you do is very, very special, very specialized and very, very difficult. And I think the more and more we talk about that and the more we challenge the perception about uh, what people are doing every day, the better we will be. We want everyone to understand that working in the employability sector, whether that be housing, employment support, through to careers, healthcare, social care, health and well-being, um, is a great place to work. It's a great thing to do. It really has that social and economic impact. And we do that through a number of facilities, through research, through support, through championing uh, events and activity. I'm, I'm up at the Learning Work um, Institute conference next, next week in Scotland and uh, chairing a plenary around um, 
uh, staff asset and, and, and what we do to, to make sure that we retain that skill and that support for, for people and that we progress as organisations forward um, with that support. Uh, we want to make sure that employers like Working Links and many others are recognising the specialist skills that they have within their organisation. And yes, the, you know, that does go through to reward and recognition, but it's also about making sure that they are maximising the opportunities that individuals and groups within their employ are presenting because they understand uh, what it is that people do either individually as teams or, or as departments, and also how much more they can do in terms of that social aspect. Now, Working Links have been very good as an organisation at um, ascertaining opportunity and, and delivering through, through bidding uh, those opportunities. So, you know, it's, this is once again not teaching suck eggs. This is, this is the, the reality of what we're trying to create as a sector. And then finally, a network of opportunity enables everyone to share things to build a sector that is robust, that challenges, but that supports, that really provides great opportunity. There are very few college leaders, leavers even now with the millennial generation that are looking for employability as a, as a career opportunity, but that will change. And there are a number of things in this presentation that will prove that to be the case. So I said I would talk about uh, two years ago, we started some kind of really kind of high level thinking about uh, high level, I mean, <laughs> in, the, in the nicest sense, um, thinking about what we thought the future of buyers would be like. And, and you'll read this list and you just think, well, that's apparently obvious. And a lot of this is already here. But two years ago, we were still delivering um, work program. Uh, we were, there were still organizations delivering work program in, in large volume, albeit uh, reducing volumes. Um, and we were looking towards the horizon, looking to the new world of work and health and a number of other um, ESF contracting and um, career service and, and very similar things and, and, and wondering what would come around the corner. A number of things have changed over the last two or three years. You know, commissioners are very interested in workforce development plans, uh, very interested in by default um, how the IEP can support that, albeit um, IEP membership wouldn't uh, necessarily on its own uh, score points under a commissioning uh, setting, um, although it will help. Um, and also they're very interested in, in what people are doing uh, with social value, volunteering um, and developing people uh, to be able to support that, that kind of activity. So um, it goes without saying that people need to be highly skilled. Uh, I don't need to go into that. I, I would genuinely believe that everybody works in this sector is highly skilled and there are ways of proving that and there's something I want to talk about at the end of this presentation. Have to be customer focused, have to be able to build trust, have to do that from an ethical point of view. Gone are the days and uh, every single person on this, uh, this webinar is excluded from this, but gone are the days where a job, any job was found and sustainability wasn't a massive issue. Um, and I know we've been working towards it over the last five, six, seven, eight years, but you know, there were times where a job was a job. Uh, and you know, looking back, that's, that's disappointing, but it was how it was. Uh, we need people working on the front line who are resourceful. They're integrated in the local systems. They lead those systems. They have a connection, they have relationships, they have a network of people and the IEP helps support, support those networks. We can't do all of this on our own. That's the really important thing here. We know now that we need to engage with organizations, particularly across the health space, but, but elsewhere as well. And if we're not leading those systems and we're not trusted as being a deliverer of excellence, then those relationships fall down. I mean, there's an old, you know, adage, you know, if you say you're going to do something, you should deliver on that and you should deliver on that to the best of your ability. And I genuinely believe that. Uh, and I hope that um, within the sector, we will continu continuously build an environment where, where that is the case. And of course, being connected to local systems, local authority delivery partners, all those things. I met a provider the other day um, that spoke to some of their staff under work and health and, and they are now called I think, please forgive me, service managers. And that's uh, that because they are expected to manage a locality as well as a managing a caseload. Um, so they're not managers in a traditional sense in terms of managing a staff base within their employer, but they are definitely managing, uh, there is no doubt. And, and it's quite exciting. The really interesting thing there 
is that we decided to do this project around the future advisor. And very much like the example I've just given, a number of organizations that aren't even now using the term advisor. Now there's nothing wrong with the term advisor, but it's interesting how we've, we've morphed and how when I get to talk a bit later on about the new employability practitioner standards at level four, uh, the apprenticeship, that we've gone for a title of employability practitioner. And so, and 50 organizations help develop that. So it is interesting how things are moving and morphing. And I, from what I will describe later, you can see that that only helps and supports and substantiates public and government view about this profession being standalone, um, unique, and professional. Okay, so now on to the resources, which is why you're here today. Um, we have uh, a website called myiep.uk, and you can sign in, you can manage your profile and preferences like you can do on any other website. You can print your certificates, your membership card, and you can get lots and lots of information. On there also, and probably the thing you'll use most to start with is the Knowledge Bank. Lots and lots of guides, information, learning, support, um, a really good and detailed resource. And actually it's the one thing out of the new website that we're still working on to make sure that it looks and feels like everything else, but it's eminently usable. It's a searchable database and it really, really works. On there as well, if you're an IEP member, you can track your own CPD. Um, you can score points against CPD, you can print a certificate, uh, you can do lots and lots of things that you can do in uh, professional institutes. And also as an IEP member, you can gain offers, uh, bursary offers, which means, uh, I don't know what the Learning Work Institute Scotland would be, but um, it say it's £250 to go. Well, as a frontline practitioner, firstly, that's a lot of money. Secondly, it's a lot of money for your employee. If your employer offers that up as, a, as an opportunity to develop. And thirdly, you've got to try and get the time off and manage your caseload and stuff. So removing the cost of it, uh, of, of attendance really really does help um, and that's no kind of light conference presence that's absolutely the same delegate presence as everybody else and it's just offered to you through the IEP. There is some stuff on there with uh, I've mentioned 10 things guys earlier on about specific professional practice with a particular customer or in a particular location or challenge uh, we also have an induction pack there and, and working links induction is, is very good. You know, I'm not, I'm not suggesting this tops up, it supports. There's some stuff around challenging extremism on there and alone working, which is really useful. But also you can, as an IEP member, gain CPD points by doing this. So it's worth doing anyway. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And here's some examples of, of what that looks like. So a number of the legal requirements, but, and this has been built by the sector uh, to help support organizations to make sure they've got everything in place. And uh, dare I say, there's also an interactive jobs board which is available through the site. Um, I'm sure every single person on the call at the moment is very, very happy with their employment, uh, but it's always useful to have a look and see what's there. And as an employer, if I have anybody here who has responsibility for recruitment, um, then you can go online and post vacancies. And because Working Links is a very is a, a valued corporate affiliate partner, the IEP, there are massive discounts for placing uh, vacancies for recruitment on there. Oh, the other thing about the jobs board, if I forget later, is is the only people that are on there are people that are working in the sector or genuinely want to work in the sector and understand it. So it's a really, really good um, stock of resource. Um, so, uh, onto the new website. Uh, it's been cleaned, it's been upgraded, it just looks uh, really, really good and very professional now. For anyone who saw the old website, it was six years old and about six years out of date. Um, so, uh, one of the things I wanted to do uh, when I took over is to uh, improve that. The really interesting thing, because obviously, you know, the look and feel is the look and feel, and if you, if you find it looks nice, then that's great, but it doesn't have a massive amount of value. Um, the thing that does add value to it is there is something called social link now, uh, which enables you to post to uh, build groups, make connections, very much like on, on LinkedIn, but linked to the IEP membership. Um, great thing about that, it's very safe. You only converse and interact with those individuals that are, want to be connections with you, and they're the only people that will see anything that you post. So there's no kind of external public element there. 
Uh, we are working very hard at the moment on the updated Knowledge Bank layout. Uh, that will be another couple of weeks and that will then look like everything else. Uh, functionality though, it will, will improve, but you know, you can still get what you need by the Knowledge Bank layout at the moment. And there's a really good Get Involved section on the front page, which I'm gonna show you in a moment. So, if you just bear with me a second, I am just stop sharing, I'm back with you hopefully on the, <laughs> or, or not hopefully on the big screen. And then I'm going to try now and, Yeah, see what I can do here. So just bear with me just a second. Here we go. So hopefully this is, I'm just going to do this again, just to make sure. Yeah, here we go. I feel more comfortable if it's, if it's purposely showing the screen. So if you can see here, this is our website. Okay, anyone who's been on recently will recognize this is the new and improved version. And uh, I don't want to labor too much about the front page, but uh, what I will do first though, as long as I don't make you dizzy, is I want you to remember these, these bullets, these points, because that's how the new Knowledge Bank's layout's going to work. And I need to sign out. What you'll find now on the front page, on the home page, is no My IEP or My CPD points. They are for only people who have logins to the site. So you can see the look and feel very professional. Here's the signing inbox, some stuff around the IEP, the knowledge bank, what's going on, what's coming up. This is us here today. Latest news, tweets, how you can join the IEP. So working links is here. You as an individual member can be here. And these are for organizations like URSA and Give Us a Chance Consortium, the Learning Work Institute, who help us as strategic partners to get our message out there. Uh, Careers England are one of the most recent of that. This is really interesting here. This is how you can personally get involved. Ask a fellow of the IEP a question. Share with us what you do that really works. Send us your news, upcoming events and everything we can publicize for you. Join a network in your local area. Start a network in your local area. Okay. And then as you can see, the partners that we work with are scrolling along the bottom there, um, telling everybody uh, that we have lots of friends, uh, which is always nice. Um, if we waited long enough, working links would, uh, would come along the bottom there. Some really good ways of getting involved. We have our own YouTube channel, we have our own LinkedIn account, and our Twitter uh, feed. I'm not going to wait for working links. You'll have to um, be assured that it is there. Okay. I'm going to go as slow as I can so I don't make you dizzy as this comes across to you. And I'm going to go back up to the top. Across here, like any other website, you've got information about the board and what the fellows are currently, who the support teams are, that kind of stuff, how you get involved as an individual member, what you can do for your career progression, CPD, the jobs board. We've also put the draft employability practitioner standard trailblazer apprenticeship on there and the endpoint assessment plan. So those things are there. The knowledge bank I'll come to in a moment, the guides and best practice and stuff. I could show you now, by the way, that because I'm not signed in, you can't get access to those things. But just believe me, if you're not signed in, you can't get access to those things. And you can see a number of guides there and best practice. And then news and events speaks for itself, to be honest. At the top here also is a very, very quick link to the jobs board. And actually what I might do is just, I'll sign in and then I'll show you the link to the jobs board. Fortunately, if I tick the box, it remembers who I am, which is great. Uh, there we go. So now I've got more above here. I've got my CPD here and my IEP here, which I'll go over in a moment. And I'm signed in. I've got lots and lots of stuff in this box now. Yeah. If you want to use the jobs board, there's a great click link there. And there you go, it pops up, has a look and a feel exactly like, uh, like the IEP website. Um, and you also can see that there is um, something for job seekers and something for, let me move that out of the way, something for job seekers, something for employers. Um, job seekers is straightforward like any, um, board um, and any jobs board you can manage your resumes in there upload information do some job search and set some job alerts for stuff that you're interested in around salary or geography or whatever and manage your account very very straightforward and if you've used jobs board before like um indeed or anything like that very very similar way it works 
As an employee, if you want to post a job, it's really easy. Post a job or set up an account. You can manage the CVs online and stuff like that for people that have applied. Uh, you can do all those things. Uh, but just for anyone on the call that may well be a, an employer, here is the detail about. So you're looking at a 50% discount for any kind of posting for, for jobs there because Working Links is a corporate affiliate partner of the IUP. If you're ever outside of the normal homepage, you can always click on the icon, the IEP icon, it returns you directly to the, to the homepage. Okay, so we've done jobs board, we've done uh, social media stuff, hopefully we're gonna get the um, YouTube one up there as well. And this is the social link activity. So before I start, I want to show you some of the elements that are on the, the knowledge bank. The first thing I'm gonna show you are the 10 things guide. As you can see, there's a number of them there. I'm going to go to motivational interviewing first. Motivational interviewing comes up, tells you some of the key components about motivational interviewing. There's a nice diagram in this. And then 10 tips for engaging, motivating customers. Written by Peninsula Training Development Company uh, with a very dynamic in individual called John who, who has done a number of networking events for us and is really, really keen on this, this element. If we go back to the Knowledge Bank again, go to IEP Guides, 10 Things Guides. I'm going to go to, oh gosh, uh, Dyslexia and Dyspraxia. If any of you could talk, you might be able to tell me which one you want to see. Supported by Genius Within, they're a specialist in this field. What is it? What are the stats and how can you make it easier for people that present with those challenges to you? Now, this will not make you a specialist in dyslexia and dyspraxia, but it will help you understand uh, what are some of the basic things that need to be achieved? And I'm sure actually as I go through these there'll be a number of people thinking oh god Well, I know lots about such and such and we're always looking for 10 things guides around specialist areas So please please supply them. You've got lots of opportunities here uh, to see what they're like. I'll just do you one more Let's go to sight loss This is written by RNIB. Everyone knows who RNIB are I'm sure and you can see there's a lot more information. They did a very big study on this with the I, with IEP support. And that tells you all the things that you need to know and gives you access to so many more guides and information. Um, that's the important thing to say here, that the you may see a, 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 a sheet of things, but there's always access to more information, more learning. Okay. On the IEP guides as well, I mentioned the induction pack. Oh, and before I say that, on the uh, stammering one, there's a there's a very obvious, um, a very obvious part of the ten things guide, and that is to not complete somebody's sentences. Uh, which, when you say that, is really obvious. But we all work, we all care about people massively, and we want to support them to the best of our ability. So it'd be quite a natural thing for us trying to uh, enable somebody to move the conversation on. As quickly as possible because we're time pressured or, or whatever and actually you know clearly it doesn't help but it's it's important to to identify if we go to the uh, induction pack you can see here let's pick challenging extremism and that should pop up now uh, my computer always likes to um, make sure that uh, you won't have that problem make sure that I I should be doing this okay and, and within a few minutes, uh, sorry, a few moments, this should pop up. There we go. So there's the facilitator pack. This can be learned in a group or it can be done um, uh, on individually. There we go. There's lots and lots of stuff there. I'm doing this as slowly as possible because I'm going to make you feel sick. And there's a slide deck. And if you want the slide deck, you can get it here, PowerPoint slides. Okay. Passing that will count to an induction certificate and will be recorded on your annual CPD. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Uh, just one more of those, uh, sorry, in terms of the induction pack. Uh, case load management, which I'm sure you're all experts at. There we go. And you can see very much the same principles. Now these were written by the sector, by a number of people in the sector. Uh, a couple of years old now, so they're not going to be irrelevant, but you know, you may have to add some elements to them. Um, but once again, you can get the slides here. That's the facilitator's guide. You can do that one-to-one -one or as a, as a group. Under the Knowledge Bank, there's also some best practice and some specialist activity, 
some stuff around policy and comment. You can see there's lots and lots of stuff there. Okay, and some really interesting employability people. And I hope um, a number of you on the call today want to tell us your story about what you do and how you go about doing it. And if you do that, you become an employability people person. It's not easy to say. Um, and we publicize you, put it through employability profession, which I'll talk about in a moment. And, uh, and yeah, it's always nice to have stories about people doing this for real, as it were. Okay. I mentioned news and events. Oh, actually, before I go, uh, IEP knowledge. Now, if I go into that fully, you will see that the look and feel is still like the old website. And that's what we're working on at the moment. We're lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. Stop scrolling. Of learning. Okay. What you can do currently, and what you'll still be able to do once we get those nice button things there, is you can search for stuff. So motivational interviewing, because I know it's there because we're just seeing it. Click on the search thing and you will then find a number of things come up uh, that mention motivational interviewing. Okay, let's just search again. Let's search for careers. Click on the, the thing and search. Uh, obviously it comes up in that bar as well. You can actually scroll down or you can go through to click on any of these links and will enable you to get some uh, working information around careers. There's quite a bit there you can see. If I typed in employability, it'd probably be a great deal more than that, okay? So that's the knowledge bank in a nutshell and that's how you can use it to find the stuff that you need. If you find that you go on there and there is something that you don't, uh, you can't find something you need, you need to tell us and we will commission somebody to provide it. Uh, maybe that's you. Maybe that's something that you really, really know a great deal about. News and events are obvious. Um, and then on to my CPD. So really quickly, the CPD program is very, very straightforward. You can update your CPD journal here, which I'll go into in a moment. You can read more about the CPD commitment here. For those that don't know, continuing, uh, CPD is continuing professional development, and as it says here. And it tells you what we expect you to do, how you record it, uh, how you go about your work, in essence, within uh, how you go about recording your CPD. Okay. A bit slow this connection tomorrow so to, uh, today, so I'm very, very sorry about that. If I go to track my certificates now, you can see all of these things and I need to fill them in. I can't print my annual CPD certificate because I haven't filled it in. And that's not good enough and I apologize. But by the next time we do something like this, I will have done that. Um, you can uh, put your journal entries in. Okay, you can search for entries. You can add an entry. Can you see this here? You can email it to yourself. You can do lots and lots of things with that. Okay. We're now into the kind of uh, back end. This is your personal information and records. Okay. If we go to the profile, you can make changes whenever you need to. Anything with a red asterisk is not public. So you can be reassured that um, your full name, your gender, your postal address, all of those things are, are not available to anybody else. Okay, but you can make changes there really easily. Your information and settings, I would suggest you go into this in terms of preference, tick them all, but if you don't tick anything else, you need to tick the bottom box, which enables your activity feed, which I'll show you in a minute, which is really exciting. Okay, you can see what you're paying and how you go about paying it for the, for the IEP and you can manage your content and features. You can put up to 10 articles in there, lots and lots of stuff that you want to do. And of course this is new, so I've not done a massive amount on that. And back to professional development there, which is the stuff that's going on um, under your CPD um, every year. Okay. So back to that page there. Once again, under my IEP, you can print your certificate. I'm going to go to that in a minute. You can pay your membership. You can do your presences where we've just been. You go to the jobs board. You can claim tax relief for membership, by the way, as well. Um, lots and lots of stuff on there that you can just manage your profile, manage your member experience. 
Okay, just show you the certificate. Uh, if you're not already a member, you won't see one for a while. View the certificate, which is eminently principal. There you go. I'm very proud to be a fellow of the IEP, uh, and that's my membership certificate. Okay, now just very briefly then on the social link activity. So I've shown you the website, the front end, how you gain learning, how you go about what you need to do. I've now shown you how to. I know I've shown basically how to update your information and make sure that you are part of the conversation. What I now want to show you is what that conversation looks like. So I'm click on my feed now, and here we go. I'm sure you recognize this as being very LinkedIn-like. Um, it is, you know, I don't make any apologies for that. It works. And you can see a number of people are posting on my timeline here. Lots and lots of different activity. New members have come up. Uh, I even posted a photo at some point. I'm hoping it might show. No, it won't. It's too far off the thing. It's too long ago. But anyway, that's the feed. You add something in. Uh, I'm going to do it now. Conducting a webinar with those excellent people from working today. Post it. Everybody you can connect with can see that. Marvellous. There we go. And really, really cleverly and importantly is this is my iPhone. Um, it's got lots and lots of junk on it, but it's also got this app, SL Social Link, which you can download from any uh, Android store or the App Store. And you will see that is an exact representation of what's there. You can get all your learning on this app, you can get all your social link feeds, you can do all the things you need. And if I look really carefully, the feed, the, the, feed the, the one that I've just put in at the top is available. It is there already. So you can do all those things on the move while making coffee, uh, whatever, whatever, during the day. And that's a real development for the IEP because that was never available before. Okay, so I think I've, I've showed you around the website and the social link activities. I really hope that provides for um, easier access to you, something that's kind of understandable now and um, that you will use it more often. And I want you to all keep in touch. My email address, you'll find me on LinkedIn and you'll find me on the social link, but also my email address is scott, S-C-O-T-T dot parkin, P-A-R-K-I-N at I employability i being the letter i employability.org scott.parkin at i employability.org um please spell employability correctly or <laughs> we're in trouble working in this sector aren't we but anyway um that's that so just want to move away from the demo and show you just really quickly what i think the future is going to be Okay, so if I just bring my PowerPoint presentation back up again, here we go. Uh, you also, as part of your membership and part of the corporate affiliate partner offer, get employability professional every week. I hope you read it, or at least elements of it. Store it away, go back to things that you like. It's a really, really good resource. It comes out 52 weeks of the year. Every single Monday, unless it's a bank holiday, then it's Tuesday. You will receive this at 10 o'clock in your inbox. Please read it. It's a really good way of keeping up to date around what's happening in the sector, but also what things are going on, what events and activities are going on. Okay. And just some simple examples of, of the kinds of things that we put out there. Now, uh, I just want, I don't want to labor on this, but um, one of the reasons we developed the Trailblazer and one of the reasons we genuinely believe in CPD is that Every single day, frontline practitioners support uh, customers, clients, participants, candidates um, to learn, to develop, to change their lives, uh, and, and uh, are a very positive influence in that happening. How can we turn around to a customer and say that they need to improve their standing, their skill, their motivation, their confidence and any kind of myriad of different things if we're not doing that ourselves if we're not practicing what we preach if we are not standing up to be counted if we're not going this is what i do 
I want to be ahead of the curve. I want to be building my understanding. I want to constantly be the best that I can be. Now, I know that's the case with everybody practicing in our sector because we wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't the case. But it needs to be really visible. And CPD is a really good example of doing that. So we developed a level four employability practitioner apprenticeship trailblazer standard. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? And that will be available from October. It has everything that anyone could ever need to be a practitioner in this environment in its widest sense now and for the immediate future. We're really excited about this. Um, for the first time ever, uh, IEP membership is linked with a qualification. So you become an AIEP, which is the associate level when you start, an MIEP, which is member when you, uh, when you complete. And there will be fail, pass and distinction if you get a distinction within the apprenticeship standard, um, you will be invited as long as you fit all the other criteria, you'll be invited and supported to um, apply for fellowship. That for me is really exciting. And also, lastly, what is also really exciting is that because it's an apprenticeship standard, it will be apprenticeship levy funded. So organizations have no other excuse uh, to utilize their levy funding uh, to deliver on this uh, frontline learning. And we all know that most of the commercial revenue in any business and most of the PR, goodwill, activity, customer relations, all of these things is driven by frontline practitioners. Okay, so we submitted the level four um, assessment plan and the uh, draft standards to the Institute for Apprenticeships root panel on the 14th of August. We fundamentally expect that by the end of September they will have advised us whether it's okay, whether it needs tweaks or whether it has failed uh, at that point. Um, and we are very positive that the reaction will be good and that we'll be likely to be able to deliver um, from October. The IEP is going to become the EQAO, which is the External Quality Assurance Organisation, so that means we will be protecting the standards, making sure that all those delivery organisations and assessment organisations are doing what they set out to do. And that's it really. So uh, I've talked today about um, what we thought two years ago the advisor was going to look like. I've talked today about what the IEP is about, what its mission and its vision is. I've shown you today, hopefully, enough about how to use the website and the resources and how to support your own CPD and learning. And then lastly, I've told you what is coming out over the hill um, for learning and development in a very uh, practical and, and, and full-on way with the uh, Employability Practitioner Apprenticeship Standard. So I'm, I'm just going to now... Uh, Come back to me, and there you go, oops. I'm back here, I hope. So hopefully you can see me again. So I just wanted to say very briefly, thank you very much to all of you um, for uh, attending the, the webinar call. I hope you've got out of it what you expected. I hope you now go away and use the resources and the support that is available to you much more than maybe you have done before. I hope you also go and tell colleagues about how simple and easy it is to access these facilities. And if you've never done this before and you've lost your login and everything, I hope you now go away and are spurred on to make sure you get that and to, um, and to access the services and resources that are available. And very lastly, I hope that you're spurred on to uh, apply for individual membership within the IEP, that's, that's up to you and that you continue to work with us uh, to create what we hope and what we genuinely believe will be a very, very dynamic, very professional, very well-recognized sector uh, for the future. So unless there are any final comments, I'm going to end the recording and thank you very much for all your time.